All right. In another video, I talked about the amino acid taurine, and we went through all of its sort of grand, big picture activities and what it does and all that. And then I had mentioned that because it has so much activity in highly metabolic tissues like the heart and the brain, that we would get into that in its own video, and this is that video. So let's break down why taurine would be so important to these critical structures. Obviously, all your organs are important, but your heart and your brain are two of the most important things for keeping you here on the planet, at least primarily. So let's talk about taurine and the heart and the brain. So the first thing is just a quick little review around taurine. It is a amino acid and normally amino acids are used in the synthesis of proteins. It's an indirect protein synthesis trigger, but also taurine does a number of other really important things. And so it's involved in detoxification of a number of things. It's involved in protection of the mitochondria and the cell membranes. It's involved in antioxidant support. It's involved in immune balance, immune defense activity, but also really sort of immunomodulation. It's involved in the maintenance and repair of certain types of neurotransmitter channels, things of that nature, receptors, etc. And then also it has function as an osmolite, which we'll get into more. So those are the big reasons that taurine is so important. And why would when we look at tissue like heart and brain tissue, find a lot of concentration of taurine in heart and brain tissue. Well, one of the reasons is that all of these things I just mentioned and a number of others are really important in excitable tissue. So what's an excitable tissue? It's anything that has the potential to generate an action potential, which creates nerve or neuromuscular activity. Well, that's your whole brain, your whole nervous system, really, and your heart, because remember, your heart has to have neuromuscular activity to keep beating because it doesn't get a break. It doesn't beat all the time, right? So yes, your skeletal muscle that moves your body around is important also, but it gets a break sometimes. Your heart never gets a break. So heart and brain are going to use a lot of taurine. So let's go through some of the things that the heart is especially going to appreciate about taurine. One of the things is that your heart can be more sensitive to certain types of toxic exposures. And we normally hear about your heart and toxic exposures with, you know, certain types of drugs that are cardiotoxic and stuff like that, but also uh, xenobiotic substances. So things that mimic, you know, hormones and other stuff, but they're really, you know, bad chemicals. Those actually can be very damaging to the heart and can be assisted in their removal or processing by taurine. That's very important to them. The other thing which can be toxic to your heart can be the buildup of aldehydes. And we're always making aldehydes in our body, which is an intermediate chemical, but we don't want to keep any around or we don't keep a lot around. So our body has these aldehyde enzymes to help get rid of the aldehydes. Well, it turns out in addition to the other things that support those, taurine is very helpful as well. So the lower the aldehyde levels, the less irritation to the cardiovascular system, among other things. Then there's something that's incredibly important to the overall support of your cardiovascular system, and that is the antioxidant support. The cardiovascular system and the heart proper are very, very sensitive to redox changes, free radicals, all of those sorts of nasty things. Taurine, it turns out, is a very important part of the defense against those. Another area where your heart can be greatly benefited is protection around the cell membranes and the mitochondria from taurine directly. So that means that the cell membranes are always in contact with your blood because they have to transmit nutrients and other stuff in and out. And so if you have a lot of junk around or you're just beating them up or it's a highly used and high demand tissue like your heart cells are, they're just going to get a lot more wear and tear. Well, it turns out that the taurine can help the membrane and the mitochondria to stay in really good shape. And then finally, a very mechanical but super important thing is its use as an osmolite. 
Now, this will translate also over to the brain, but osmolite means that it is a gatekeeper to allow the ions that create the action potentials, the excitable tissue activity, to go across onto first the proper side of the cell membrane and then to cross over during the action potential when we're trying to create a heartbeat, let's say, for example. It's important that we have the ions, which are things like magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium, chloride, but it's also very important that they stay on the proper side of the cell membrane and they only cross over when we want to trigger an action potential. Well, it turns out for all tissues, but your heart does this a lot, that the movement is gate-kept or regulated by osmolite activity. Taurine is one of your primary osmolite stabilizers, which is very, very important. So we use a lot of taurine in cardiac care. We use a lot in damaged cardiac muscle. We use a lot in things like dysrhythmias, etc. And it is extremely useful as a supplement or an add-on in those areas. What about the brain? Well, essentially, the brain is going to be very similar to what I just said about the heart, but there's a couple of things that are maybe just done a little bit differently for the brain. So, obviously, the functions around protection of the mitochondria and the cell membrane, the antioxidant functions we talked about, very important. Detoxification, kind of the same, except your brain is extremely sensitive not only to xenobiotics, but also to aldehydes. And because taurine helps with aldehyde detoxification, aldehydes are a neurotoxin. They're very bad for your brain. And so if you've ever had exposure to aldehyde excess, symptoms like a really bad hangover, for example, you are neurotoxic. Turns out that the brain uses taurine to help get rid of aldehydes along with a number of other nutrients that it needs for that. So detoxifying the brain from aldehydes, big, big thing. Antioxidant support, like I said, and the membrane support, kind of the same as what we talked about with the heart. The osmolite activity, kind of the same with the heart, but you just have a lot uh, more variety of it going on because the different neurological pathways are all triggering different types of action potentials and signals, and you have different uh, patterns of these signaling going on. So as opposed to the heart, where you've got sort of one thing you want to do and propagate the action potentials through the heart so you get a nice cardiac cycle out of it and you pump your blood around, very, very important. In the brain, you have billions of different pathways using the same mechanics of moving the sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and chloride around, and so that they do it in the proper manner and you're not overdoing it or underdoing it. Another thing beyond osmolite activity for the brain that's super important is the maintenance of chloride channels. So normally, when you're making an action potential for your skeletal muscle or your heart muscle or anywhere, you're not moving chloride around. You're putting chloride on the outside of the cell and you leave it there. In the brain especially, we have specific chloride channel openings to slow down neurological activity. So there are two major and some minor types of chloride channel activators. There's the GABA complex, mostly GABA-A, and then there is a glycine channel, which is separate, but it does the same thing. It opens a chloride channel. So if I always leave chloride on the outside of the cell under normal conditions of heart muscle or brain or whatever, and suddenly I open a chloride channel like in my brain, what am I going to do? I'm going to calm down my brain. Well, it turns out taurine is exceptionally needed by the GABA-A receptors, which are your primary heavy-hitting chloride channels. Now, what substances go and hit our chloride channels that we use in psychiatry or recreationally to slow down the brain, calm it down? Barbiturate-type drugs, sedatives, calm it down. Benzodiazepines, like Valium, etc. Non-benzodiazepine, GABA-affecting sleep aids like Ambien, stuff like that. Alcohol also hits the chloride channels. Upside, if you're having a seizure, we give you diazepam. It can stop the seizure in many cases. If you can't sleep, give you, you know, Ambien or something, you'll go to sleep. If I keep banging on the GABA-A channels or your chloride channels, what's going to be a downside to that? Well, 
I am going to wind up down-regulating or injuring those. So people who have chronic alcohol ingestion, people who have chronic benzodiazepine, barbiturates, whatever, they're going to have down-regulated GABA-8 channels. Well, it turns out that part of the rehabilitation and maintenance can be the addition of taurine to help out. So under normal conditions, without drugs or substances, it's helping the GABA channels, et cetera. Under rehab conditions, it's very, very helpful as well. All right. Well, hope that answers all the questions that we got, at least around brain and heart. And we have other content around taurine and brain, heart, other stuff that you can look up. Thank you, you subscribers. We love the community that we built, a good number of people. I'll put some other videos up for you to look at here, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.